So hello folks and welcome back to another um, online video uh, announcement thing. Um, so I've just got done grading through all of the um, the things where you were sort of telling me what you're thinking about doing for your topic and then finding two sources and summarizing the two sources. And they had one had to be from Google and one had to be from the library databases. And they had to, you know, the sources had to have the MLA citation stuff. So um, first of all, just for the topics, they all sound really fascinating. Um, but think about your topic. Um, read my feedback that I'm giving there about um, if everybody knows about your topic, like um, then try to find things that they don't know. Um, partially because it'll be boring if you're just telling people things that they already know, but also because it's really hard not to plagiarize that because how many ways can you say, you know, the symptoms of diabetes or, um, you know, some of the other kinds of things. Uh, if you know a lot about it, that's also a problem because you're likely to feel really complacent until the last minute about doing your research and that can end badly as you might expect. So if you know a lot, try to, I mean, what you need to do is look for some kind of angle on it that is surprising to you, maybe that people misunderstand about your topic, those kinds of things. Um, and also, this is not an argumentative essay. And I know you've been trained to do those since, you know, for the beginning of time or something. Um, so these are informative. And so that means that you're not telling me whether or not marijuana should be legalized. You're not telling me about um, even, you know, arguing whether or not serial killers are, you know, kind of born or made. Um, and that, and some of the topics like that particular one, serial killers, is those, that's a fascinating topic. It's done all the time. And a lot of times people sort of take the, you know, well, are they born or not kind of thing. And that's pretty, has been sort of studied to death in literature. So it's, I would try to find something else that's surprising. And, you know, so sometimes I threw questions in there. Don't feel like you have to take my advice or anything. Um, remember too, that it's, I believe in your class, it's four to six pages. Um, in my face-to-face -face classes, um, somehow that got mismatched, but it's five to seven. Um, I won't ding you a lot for going way, way over. I kind of probably will for way under, especially since four pages is, you know, just barely getting started in college research, but, um, you know, don't go on for 50 pages and let us, unless it's really fascinating and really good. And then um, the other thing to think about just as, you know, as you're going through this is that you don't want to end up writing something that reads like a Wikipedia article, you know, which is here's a lot of sort of disembodied facts and I'm chucking them at your head. Um, and so just, and just try to find things to say that haven't been said um, or, you know, things like that. So that's what I have you for you for that. And um, then I'm going to put something in your course um, in a minute here. That's an assignment calculator from the University of Minnesota Public Library, or not public, but the University of Minnesota Library. Um, and it's got, I mean, you can plug due dates into it and that's kind of cool. But what it's really cool for and what I use it for in my classes is that you can, there are a lot of uh, hyperlinks on the pages. And so you can, you know, kind of click through to things that you need to know about. One of the ones that uh, not all the links are live anymore. So if it goes to, you know, a dead page then look for other things, but there are a couple in there on what you're reading for when you're doing, you know, college level research um, and kind of how you're approaching that. What do you, what are you looking for that can go into a paper? So I'll put that out there for you and you can take a look at it. Um, second thing, MLA citation. Let me show you a couple of things here real quick, just so that you um, maybe, I'm not sure what all is in the course. It's been a while since I've looked, but let me just go ahead and share with you. Oh, what am I gonna do here? I'll start with the EBSCOhost. So there's that. So you're looking at my EBSCOhost, uh, Thing, site thing that I did. And um, what you need to do when you search in here, first of all, make sure that you're doing um, full text. But what you where you get your um, is that still doing? Yeah, okay. So where you're getting the source citation 
is over here on the right hand side. You're not, you know, making stuff out of this. You're not plugging this into EasyBib. You're going over here to the right hand side where there's the site button and you click that. And then what you're doing is scrolling through. So I do not want to see the Brazilian national standards um, that are in Portuguese in certain places here. Um, I also don't want to see APA, which is this, where you've got the names and then a, a, um, a date right after. Many of you do that. Maybe that's something you were taught. Um, but we're doing MLA here, so it's a very different thing. Uh, scroll on down to MLA right here, and then you're grabbing from the beginning of this all the way to here. And most of you had something like this. Um, so make sure that you copy and paste it in. Um, there are ways to paste it and match the formatting. It's a little harder to do, I think, in Google Docs, but I'll try to do some or dig up something that I've done for that in the past. So that's how you find it there. And then I'm going to switch over to Gale now and share this tab instead. And so these are your Gale databases. And when you go into one of them, I did. Now, apparently, I'm going to have to do this again. So Gale in context, world history is one of my favorite ones to do. And I did a Viking search here earlier. And now it's being dumb, but I'll just do it again. So Vikings, um, one thing to say about any of these things is that this cool overview, you can't use it. It's basically a um, an encyclopedia entry. What you can use it for is keywords. So as you're doing things in the database, this can be really helpful for knowing what kinds of words are going to be in the kind of article that you will that will be useful for your project. Um, one cool thing about the Gale ones, um, any of them really, um, if you're doing serial killers, there's a psychology one in here too. Um, you have a lot of things collected on the page, and this is really where you want to go. I'm going to go to the academic journals just because that's fun. It can kind of tell you things like, uh, you know, how difficult these things are to read. And what did I have here earlier? I picked this one for a particular reason because somebody has a really interesting topic. So um, if that's you, then notice it. Um, so what you're doing here is you get the citation by clicking on the site button at the top and it will bring up MLA just as kind of by default. And again, you're copying and pasting it in for any of these, though, if you've got all caps shouting at people, if you have, you know, weird things in the name field, like, uh, you know, maybe their email address, take that stuff out. I mean, you're expected to look at that and make sure that it's correct. Just like you're expected to, you know, double check anything that you might get out of an AI that might be not quite right. So that's how you do these two things. And then what else do I want? Oh, so the other thing is make sure that you don't use something like EasyBib for anything that's in one of the gateway databases. The two that I've just showed you, which are Gale Cengage and EBSCO, are the ones that I recommend. Um, I know that there may be some others in there that you have, but what I'm expecting to see in either case is something that tells me not just, you know, what journal it's in, but what database you got it out of. And if it's not there, if it's not being generated by the database, then you're going to have to put it in. So um, let me go over here to the Purdue OWL um, online writing lab. So this is the MLA formatting and style guide. And what you want to do to proofread these is go down here to this order. So we always expect, oh, stop. Um, we always expect the author first with a period after it, the title of the source with a period, title of the container. That would be the journal that it's in. Um, other contributors, maybe translators or things like that, versions and numbers, publisher, publication date, and location. And if you've got all of this stuff kind of in there and then it's in a database, you kind of go back up to container again. And that's like EBSCOhost or Gale. And you can see those, you know, in some of my examples that I just had there earlier and run it back. Um, for things that are not in the databases, you are allowed to use Google for this assignment. Um, make sure that you have the, as part of the location, like at the end, the um, web link. The web link by itself is not going to save you. You have to have everything that, that you see here 
Um, but put the URL last, and then after it, put a space and then put accessed, and then the date you accessed it. So, you know, today it would be 25 October 2023 period. So do that for anything that will change. If the database is spit it out, fine, keep it. But um, don't feel like you have to add it for the databases because that's the whole point. They're not going to change. Um, so what else do I see here? Um, make sure when you proofread it that some things need to be italicized, like the titles of containers, titles of books. You know, so any kind of journal, that kind of thing, that needs to be italicized. The title of the source, like if it's an article, needs to be in quotation marks, things like that. Um, so clean that stuff up and um, then that will be good. I'll give you a little bit of my, I think I can get out of this now for the moment. So I'll stop sharing and come back over here. Yeah. All right. So my final research expectations. Um, I'll try to do something more extensive. I just didn't have time tonight. Um, you're doing four to six pages. That's not including the works cited page, and that's not including any pictures, charts, graphs, whatever you want to put. If you use those and you can, there might be a reason why you'd want to put them after the paper and before the works cited page and, you know, call it appendix or something like that. And then you're going to have to cite anything that's in there. So any of the, you know, pictures or graphs that came from a source, they're going to have to be on the works cited page somewhere. And I can help you find a librarian or something, or I can look at it um, depending on, you know, when you're doing it. So the other thing is don't just hit enter, you know, a million times to slide yourself down for the works cited page. Actually, you know, go to right before works cited and insert a page break and then it'll be anchored to the top of the page and then works cited itself will be centered and then you'll everything will be double spaced you'll use hanging indent if you don't know what that is i'll try to um, show that to you um, in google docs since all of you probably almost are using that kind of thing so that's something um i do expect too that if you use the ai for any kind of ai for anything that you have a statement and the statement can be something like um, I used Grammarly to uh, clean up my, um, you know, spelling and punctuation and to suggest alternate phrasings for certain words that will let me know. And you don't have to put, you know, Grammarly into the works cited page. But if you decide to use ChatGPT or BARD or something like that, and you ask it a bunch of questions, um, then you, I want to see the, the transcripts of that and I want to see what you asked it, and then um, there's a way to cite that. And I'll try to get that out for you too. You don't need it yet, but I just want you to know that that's an expectation that I have. And so speaking of expectations, um, I'm going to ask several of you to come have a conference with me. So you're so excited. Um, I, in my syllabus, it says that I, I require conferences of anyone where it's even, you know, a little bit plagiarized. Um, there's a lot of, uh, like the verbatim text is flagging in whatever plagiarism checker I've got and it's not cited, it's not in quotation marks. Um, I'm also gonna probably ask you if something reads like an AI or it has some weird words or things like that. And um, I might ask to have a conference with you and you're not in any trouble. I just wanna understand how people are using it and what I'm going to start seeing on a regular basis as a teacher. And so um, just, you know, don't hyperventilate or anything if I ask you for a conference. Um, I'll also ask you to come in for a plagiarism conference if there's something common knowledge and not cited. Or, um, you know, and then I might spot check some references. And if they don't exist because they came out of an AI, then we'll have a conversation. My, don't panic with any of this. My general belief is that most people are basically good, basically good at heart and that you want to learn and that's why you're in a college class. Um, I don't think people are trying to cheat. Sometimes people get overwhelmed and they take an easy way out and we can have that conversation about ways to handle that next time. But we can also, a lot of times people don't genuinely don't know. They've been told so many different things in so many different grades that they're just confused and they don't know how to do it right. So that's why I ask for the conversation, because I can show you with your own paper just in front of us 
what you can do to make it right. And that's all I want to do. So, you know, obviously, if you turn in a paper that is 100% from the internet, that's a different conversation. But I've only had a conversation like that once or twice in the last 15 years. So um, there's that, just don't panic. And then I think that's all I had for you right now. So for what I have right now, the plagiarism engine isn't great. But if I see things where it looks like you maybe copied and pasted an abstract in somewhere, or even if it's a sentence that is verbatim and flagging as verbatim, um, then I want to talk to you about that. Because um, probably it means that you need to work harder to put things into your own words. And that can be hard when you've got this horse sitting there in front of you. So I, I have some of those, and I'll send them out. And then I will give you points back after we talk. So the zero is just to be a placeholder to get your attention. Once we've had the conference that's part of my syllabus, I will give you the points back. And I'll probably even adjust on the rubric um, kind of based on what we what you tell me. Because at some cases, I can't tell if anything was from the databases because I don't have that container sitting in there. It tells me it's EBSCO or it's Gale or something like that. Um, some of you, if you use ProQuest, ProQuest is generally spits out garbage. It's got some cool sources in there, you know, some cool small databases for especially, I think, crime and legal stuff. Um, but I'm not a fan of it because you have to do so much cleaning it up to make it right. So, um, but if you tell me that's what you used and we look at it, then I can maybe help you get it in there um, better. So anyway, I feel like I'm rambling on. Um, so I guess if, if you have questions about your, um, uh, your grade, it's not a zero, but it's just really low and you, you think that's not fair, let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to talk with you. Um, that Don't panic about that either. And then if you have questions about your topic, then let's have that conversation before too much longer because you don't have a lot of time once you turn that paper in to revise it if it's way, way off the rails somewhere. And so let's try to catch it now before you put a lot of time into it. So I owe you, I'll release all of this as soon as I get done recording this video. And I will also give you that assignment calculator from the University of Minnesota Library um, so that you can kind of look through there for a lot of different things. It also has some things about, you know, sort of workflow and managing time and things like that. If you're interested, I talk to my classes about that. I can record something there for you too. But uh, anyway. Um, thanks, and I will talk to you, I guess, next week. Let's see here.